Yep. But there's another one you use quite frequently as well. What's that? It's this one. Anger, particularly towards women. And, and I want to point out about anger because many of you have this, where you have this addiction to anger. What does anger do for you, if you think about it? What do you feel when you're angry that you wouldn't feel if you stopped, if you stopped the addiction towards anger? So Jennifer, if we have the mic over there. Some kind of control and power. Power, control, yes. So anger is a way of avoiding powerlessness, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> so you can see why it becomes an addiction. You know, it's something we get to, to avoid a different kind of emotion. Yeah, it's yep. also like avoiding being a victim. Like, I hate feeling something's done to me. Like, I have no choice. Yep, so you want to f show, that, you know, get angry with the person who makes you feel that way, yes. Yeah. Oftentimes we aim anger towards one or the other of our... Uh, of our genders you know in other words we aim anger towards men but not towards women or we aim anger towards women and not towards men why would we do that what 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 does the anger do in those situations so some of us have a generalized anger in other words whenever somebody says no to us we just get angry or whenever somebody doesn't give us what we want we get angry Right, so it's pretty obvious there if somebody gets angry when they don't get what they want then we're just using anger as an addiction so, so we're using anger to get what we want. We have learned that, and in fact, you, you look in society, it's a very common viewpoint, that the way to get what you want is just get angry a bit. And if you just get angry enough, the average person will do what you want. Right? So we use anger to control the average person. But what I'm asking is, if we get angry with mostly with men, what's that about? Or if we get angry mostly with women, what's that about? What, why is there sometimes this thing where we're pretty good with women but we're angry with men? Or we're pretty good with men and we're angry with women? doesn't matter what our gender is. So I, I had a, a, looking back through my childhood the other day, I realized that I couldn't control men. Right. In, in a physical sense. In terms of the power. As That's a, right. Yeah. So you could get angry at them and get them to do what you wanted. In, in, and that was different than, than having to physically overcome them and make them do what you wanted. Right. The emotional impact was actually stronger than a physical impact. Right. But it also caused me to um, want to control women. Right, because I couldn't control the men, so then I could control the women. Yeah. So then, that that was another outlet of the same experience, actually. Sure. The same yep. feeling, unable, and not, I, and not being able to control. Can I just raise the issue of sex here, though, for for us? The gender that we feel we can have sex with is an interesting consideration in our anger. So, for example, if we're a male and we're heterosexual, then it's the woman that we generally want to please. We know that if we get angry with them, they're highly unlikely to give us sex. Does that make sense? So the way to get sex from the woman is to please them instead. Right? And so it's highly unlikely we will get overtly angry with the woman. We might be passive-aggressive with them, but... We won't be overtly angry with them, generally, under those circumstances. Now, if we're a woman, a lot of the times we think the man's too demanding with sex. So what's the way to control a person who's too demanding? You want to repel them. You want to get rid of them for a bit. How do you get rid of a person easily? Just get angry with them. Yeah, they go away and... You get them out of your life for a period of time, which is what you want if you feel like you're being imposed upon sexually, right? So you learn to use anger as a tool towards one gender and not the other. For, for a man who's pleasing the woman all the time, he probably has a lot of built-up feelings about that, inside, a frustration inside of himself about that. 
but he feels that he can't let himself be angry with the woman because if he lets himself be angry with the woman then she's probably not going to have sex with him right so what she, he does there is he gets angry with men instead sort of like a substitute or he may even go further than that and get angry with himself rather than get angry with anybody else right, so he becomes self-attacking self-abusive self self-hatred self-loathing and so so forth in order to prevent anybody around him feeling negative feelings from him obviously if you are physically bigger there is a temptation to use anger at times more than if you were physically smaller why is that makes sense doesn't it when you're physically smaller there's a high likelihood that the bigger person might be able to overcome you and so you don't get angry with those people what you do is you get angry with other people so what I see happening a lot in the spirit world with this particular problem is that for example there have been large groups of women historically who have been sexually abused or raped or hurt during their childhood or their adult life in a historical setting. so if you look particularly more than a hundred years ago it was commonplace for women to be raped even in their own marriages let alone you know be raped in day-to-day -day life whether they were married or single it was common for you know 20 to 30 percent of most women at that point in time to be either abused as children or raped as an adult woman in their life so you think in the in one generation of women you know, right now the generation of women for example there's three billion women or, or three and a half billion women or so on the planet right now and you think of if 30 percent of those women pass so how many people people that's close to a billion women passing all at once let's say if they passed all of them would have some degree of anger towards the male sexually can you see that so what they choose to do after they've passed is they choose to dump that rage that they feel towards the male sexually on any male who does not challenge them abusively in other words they dump it on men who did not cause the rape and the abuse but on rather on men who support their position do you understand what I'm saying they don't get angry with the abusers they get angry with the men who never abused because if you get angry with the abuser you might get more abuse do you see you get it if you get angry with a person who's already angry with you there's a high likelihood they'll get angrier with you if you get angry with a person who harms you there's a high likelihood they'll harm you more all right so what they do when they pass in the spirit world is they don't harm the men that harmed them they go and find men who have never harmed a woman and they harm those men and I see many people acting out this way on earth with regard to who they choose to harm they often choose to harm the person who's the safest to harm for them from their own perspective does everyone get that so for example if there's a man who's a lovely man and he's quite considerate of women he's safer to harm and yell at than a man who's abusive towards women on earth because if if a woman yells at the man who's abusive what will he do he will probably abuse her more so she doesn't yell at him do you see what I'm saying she goes and finds a man that she can yell at who will accept her yelling at him now if that's not her male child which it often can be it will be a male who she sees as weak someone who's not going to abuse her does that make sense so how I see people expressing their anger is often in this very gutless way right they choose people they can victimize and get away with it it's very rare for an angry person to choose another angry person to be angry with and the reason why is that other person will get just as nasty with them as they have gotten with them with the other person right 
So they very rarely choose that. What they choose to do is get angry with a person who will accept the abuse. Right? And who will actually want to do what the abuser says. That's what they do. And this is how many of you actually use your anger. You don't even use it ethically. If you're ethical, you'd only get angry with the people who got angry with you. <laughs> That's more ethical. It's not complete ethics because complete ethics would be I would feel like I don't want to get angry with anyone because I don't want anyone to be angry with me. That, that would be complete ethics. But the majority of us, we don't have that kind of ethics. We have the kind of ethics as what they do to me, I'll do to them. But when it comes to anger, it's rare for the average person to even engage in that ethically. What they do is they get angry with the people who have not been angry with them. Does that make sense? That's what they finish up doing. And, and we do this many, many times. And so even the way in which we use anger is addictive. See, we use anger in that way. We use anger towards a person who, who we feel is weaker than us so that we can feel stronger more easily. We can feel powerful more easily. If, if there was two people who were equal and they were equal in the way in which they were using anger, this person would feel angry with that person, but that person would get just as angry and there would be no power benefit. Does that make sense? But when there's one person who will accept the anger and the other person will dish it out, now there's a power benefit to the person who dishes out the anger, which is what they're aiming for. They want power and control over the other person. That's why we use anger. So many times we use anger towards a person who is actually weaker than ourselves or we, who we view as weaker than ourselves. Right? And that's what I see many of you doing with your anger. You're using your anger towards people who you believe you can get away with it with. Right. Lawrence? Would this relate to a, a multi-generational situation such as a woman who has a very powerful father mm -hmm. she might be angry at and then marries a man who's a lot... She will marry usually the opposite man yeah. who is submissive so that she can have all this rage projected at him and he will still do what she wants. Right. Yep. And then what will happen to the children? The child, if it's a male child, will learn actually that the male either has to do exactly what the woman wants and he will either rebel against it or do the same as dad did. Does that make sense? Which is what's happened in your case. But if you're a woman growing up in that environment, what will you think? You'll either rebel against it and you'll think dad was weak and you'll rebel against wanting a weak man like that or you'll go along with it thinking it's great for me to have a man that I can yell at. And so it just depends on what your favouritism, your favourite parent is as to which way you'll choose to go. Yeah. That explains a lot. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And this is a very common thing with multi-generational issues. So, so don't think that you get angry because other people are angry with you. Most of the time that's not the case. Most of the time you get angry because other people are pandering to you and it's a position of power to be angry with them. All right. That is interesting. So I think so.